Vanderbilt University professor and author of Dying of Whiteness, How the Politics of Racial Resentment is Killing America's Heartland, Jonathan Metzl. Jonathan, I'm sorry about the mess. Excuse Thank you so much. <laughs> Excuse our mess. No, that's they, great. As they say in office. I'll, I'll okay. Leave these, I'll leave so you wrote a very interesting <laughs> book. Uh, we've heard before that the uh, Trump voter votes against his own economic interest, but you're taking it a, quite a bit further, and you're saying that Trump policies actually make it more likely that the mostly white male voter, who is the Trump core voter, is going to get sick and die. I mean, in a nutshell, <laughs> that, that is kind of what I'm showing. I'm, we're not I'm, allowed to call them stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professor and I'm a, and I'm a doctor, right? And I, I me too. Okay, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> I know, as far like, as you know, yeah, days, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and and so you know, basically, the core argument of the book is that the politics that claim to make um, white America great again right. end up making particularly working class white lives harder, sicker, and in many instances, shorter. I spent about seven years going through the South where I live wow. and tracking the story of basically what happens if you live in a state that, for example, blocks health care reform, that lets anybody sure. and everyone buy Medicaid a Medicaid expansion. Medicaid expansion, blocking Save the expansion. many lives and, yeah. You know. Huge tax cuts that end up undercutting roads, bridges, and schools. And what I found was, on one hand, that gave many people the sensation of winning, but when I looked at it from a medical angle and from a data angle, those policies themselves ended up being as dangerous to people, and particularly working class white people, as asbestos or secondhand smoke or not wearing seat belts in cars, they were literally contributing to a shortened lifespan. And guns, too, right? I mean, it, when the gun laws are lax, aren't there more white suicides? I mean, that was one of the more surprising things. I spent a lot of time in Missouri and really, really painful, powerful, um, you know, I would go to NRA meetings, I sat in on support group meetings for people who, who lost loved ones for suicide. There's nothing nothing more painful and more sad, but the issue that I found was when you, when you make... Um, the gun law is very lax in a particular state. It seems like it's just about, you know, letting people conceal carry or open carry, all those kind of things. But there's this filter down effect in which all other kinds of shootings become more prominent. So there were more accidental shootings, more partner shootings, more police shootings. But the real shootings that skyrocketed were deaths of white men, basically. White men were about white, two, two white, thirds of the deaths. Right. White men commit suicide yeah. in ways that minorities don't. Is that? True. I mean, basically, you know, we have about 40,000 gun deaths a year in this country, and two-thirds of those deaths are, are, um, are suicides. And of that, the numbers of white male suicides, it's, it's like 80%, 85%. Why is that? Why do, why do white men kill themselves I've spent a lot of time, other men yeah. don't? I mean, partially, it's that white men own a lot of guns. And particularly in rural areas where people are feeling isolated and factors like that. So, I, but I also think that you know I found these remarkable stories of people who the gun was their protector; it was there to protect them. But in these moments of despair, you know, they got fired, they um, you know lost their job, they found out their wife was having an affair, something like that. In that moment, this thing that's supposed to be your protector ends up being the most lethal thing you can have in the room. And so, again and again, when I talk to families, this thing that was like the symbol of white of white authority became its undoing, very lethal. Does it have anything to do with the fact also that maybe as they went through life, they had white privilege to some degree? Not that everyone, well, white life is easy, it certainly is not, especially in rural areas, but they never faced the kind of hardship that minorities face more routinely. Well, so I when the shit hit the fan, boom. I, I certainly think that that's absolutely true in a particular way, which is, in other words, I, he I heard a lot of people talking to me about, you know, whiteness under attack and white, kind of white despair because of immigrants and minorities. And I did want to kind of say the same thing, even though I was there as a researcher, I kept thinking, well, there are a lot of people in your state who actually have it a lot worse than you. But that being said, I... Yeah, they I, don't want to hear that. <laughs> but, but I also, there's yeah. something very particular about white male gun suicide, which is that, on one hand, it's incredibly prevalent and prominent. And on the other hand, there's this huge knowledge gap. Nobody talks about it. If you listen to the NRA, for example, they say you need guns because of carjackers and gangbangers and all these kind of things. And even researchers like myself, there's a huge gap in knowledge because there's been a federal ban on gun research. And so we don't right. even know, I mean, many, many white Americans own guns. What predicts which one's going to turn the gun on themselves? And the honest answer, if anybody tells you this, the honest answer is we don't know. But it's not the government's job to prevent suicide, is it? Well, I mean, the issue again... Some people, you have to take yeah. some... 
of course. Personal responsibility. Course. Despondency can't also be part of the portfolio well, of the guns, federal government. Yeah, guns is an interesting case about that, right? Because there's this long history of gun ownership, and people are very proud of it. And so I don't. I would never want to say that I was going to take somebody's gun or mm. that we should. But it was interesting to see that these. It was just suicide was an unintended consequence. But also, the gun laws. is a form of. I think of an attachment of white pride, you know, the, the, it's, a, it's a sort of a cultural identity thing now. I mean, that's, and, yeah. And pri I mean, I feel like in America now, white people are either self-loathing, <laughs> the liberals are, you know, they're white so lame, <laughs> and, and, you know, the unbearable being of whiteness. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and the Trump people are the opposite. Yeah. You know, they actually think reverse racism is a, is a worse problem. They, there's no middle ground. There's no, like, sensible whiteness.